Well, God is good. Every, uh, I always wake up early in the morning and I always ask the Lord to, to show me different things. And usually uh, I've been asking the Lord to show me a word or prepare my heart for a word to give. Yes. Um, very seldom he tells me to write it down, but when he tells me to write it down, it's always for a reason. Uh, this morning's a little bit different. I believe it's a word from the Lord, and it's not going to be given the way it normally is. I wrote it down, and he told me to read it. It's out of my comfort zone. Okay. So, Lord, open up our ears that we may hear your words. Yeah. Help me able to read my writing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. If you have been running against the footmen and they have wearied you and have caused you to, uh, to be tired and have caused you to faint, how then will you contend with the horse? For the horsemen are coming. Therefore know that the testing of your faith, your trust in me, is much more valuable than gold. Yes, fine gold or any other thing that the world offers. Why do you think it's strange that when your faith, your trust in me is tested, you think it's strange? Yes, it is a fiery test. It is a fiery trial. You should, should you not rejoice? For are you not a partaker of my son? Are you not the servant of Christ? For if the reproach of my son is upon you, you are indeed blessed. For my spirit, my glory, the living God rests upon you, and you are glorified. Therefore, rejoice and be glad with exceeding joy, with praise and honor, as Jesus is revealed in you and through you. Knowing and understanding that the testing of your faith, your trust in me, will work, will work fully to accomplish patience. The patience, the endurance, the firm steadfastness, the faithfulness, wherein you lack nothing. The cleansing of the wantonness of the world. Yes, the time has come, and yes, is even now in my house, that the world's uncontrollable desire for need and want will turn many away. Wherefore, gird up your mind and be sober for the grace that is brought by the revelation of my Son is sufficient. Be ye obedient. For who has called you is holy, you also be holy. Not by your hand, but by my hand, my spirit. For I am preparing, I am providing, I am your source. Stand, stand, stand strong in the hope, the lively hope, the living hope, the abundance of mercy through the resurrection of my Son. Therefore sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and you will want nothing. For I am your shepherd. I lead you by the stilled water. I provide the green pasture. I prepare the table. Yes, even before your enemies. Therefore, you will no longer fear evil. For I have tried. I have tested. I have sanctified. Rejoice, for I am at work in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you got a question? People go ask the goo. <laughs> ask all kind of junk, all kind of stuff. All right, man, you guys, y'all ready to... Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for your goodness. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, you do speak to us, Lord, through your word. You, this is how you communicate to us, Father, through your word, through circumstances, through people, Lord. And the more that, Father, we learn of you, Father, the better we can hear you. Yeah. 
So, Lord, tonight, Father, today, should I say, Father, this morning, Lord, we just... Uh, Lord, we're seeking for you, Lord. I ask that you would open our ears to hear you, Father, our heart to receive you. And, uh, Lord, just keep me, uh, keep me straight this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 My brother is getting a... Um, they, yeah, they fit, setting up Facebook and stuff like that. It's all good. But you guys ready? Absolutely. Man, we're going to get into some good stuff today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the Bible, you know, just really quick. That if we go to John 5, the Bible says, plain and simple, that, you know, and you guys heard this a thousand times from me, that, you know, um, that Jesus said, you search the scriptures, and in them you think you have life, but they are they which testify of me. For if you'd have believed Moses, you'd have believed me, for he wrote of me. And um, we can find this in a few places. So the whole Old Covenant is all about Christ. The importance of it is that, man, God, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. And we can learn, you know, um, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that God declares the end from the beginning. And we can look to the end, to his word, to find out what's going to happen in the end. But not only that, we can look to, um, you know, today we're getting into 1 Kings chapter 17, which is Elijah. You know, uh, Brother Sal started off about running a foot race and horses and all of that. And here it is, Elijah, you know, outran a chariot. Kind of crazy how it all gets started, huh? Yeah. It's all about trusting in him. That's what the story's about. Yeah. It opens up a lot, but you're going to see that, that each of these pictures that's in the Word, a man, is, it's all a picture of Christ. And it was predicted and said, and we're going to get into it, that... Um, Elijah must come before Jesus comes, right? Yeah. So God establishes this two or three times, you know, just with, you know, certain different people as many, um, he establishes it many times, but I'm just going to show you through a couple, through Elijah and Elisha. Um, the saying is Elijah must come before Jesus returns. Elijah's name means Yahweh is God. Right? So he's a picture of God the Father. And Elisha, his name means Yahweh is salvation. Jesus, the word salvation. His name is Yahshua, which is, he's our salvation. His very name means salvation. So in the picture of Elijah and Elisha, you're going to get a picture of God the Father and the Son. You're going to get a picture of his coming. Elijah prepared the way for Elisha. God told Elijah to go throw your mantle onto Elisha, right? You're going to see that Christ plowed the field with 12 yoke of oxen. Elisha plowed the field. Well, Jesus plowed the field with 12 disciples. Elisha plowed the field with 12 yoke of oxen. You're going to begin to see all of these, these likenesses in it. Because they speak not only of his first coming, but also of his second coming, right? So his first coming that we know of is John and Luke. You know, he said, look, uh, you missed it. Elijah did come. John, uh, John was the Elijah to come, right? He was the voice in the wilderness calling, make straight the pathway for the Lord. He was calling back the hearts of the children to the Father. Wow, how crazy is that? It's Father's Day. That's what God said. Elijah, his ministry was to call the hearts of the children back to the Father. So here it is. You know, we get this example through Elijah and Elisha. We see the fulfillment with John the Baptist, Yohanan ben Zechariah, who was a picture of Elijah to come. Jesus comes on the scene. But before the Lord comes again, Elijah must come. And so we're going to get into the story of Elijah because in the story of Elijah, you're going to get three and a half years or 42 months of Elijah's ministry. You're going to find out a lot of things about Elijah which connects directly to Christ in his first coming. 
But then you're going to get in the story of Elisha. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to take you through Elijah and Elisha. We're going to read it. I'm going to break it down, break the names down, and show you how it's a picture of his first coming and his second coming. And what happened then will happen again. You'll see that it's going to show us when he's going to return, when to expect him, when to be looking for him, and what to expect, right, on Father's Day. And remember, remember what Elisha said, that he wanted a double portion of Elijah's mantle, right? And you're going to find out what that mantle actually represents. I know you guys have a, you know, kind of a clue, but we're going to take it a little deeper. And, you know, a lot of people think, well, Elisha did double the miracles that Elijah did, and that's what's taught. But what he was asking for is the rights of a firstborn son. And you see it in 2 Kings chapter 2, where he cries out, my father, my father. So here it is, you get a picture of God the Father and the Son at the Jordan. Wow, remember? They cross over the Jordan, Elijah and Elisha's there. Then we get the exact same picture again with Moses. Remember, God said, for Moses shall be as a God unto the people, right? And Joshua is the right hand. They're at the Jordan. So Moses, a type of God, Joshua, Yeshua, picture of Christ at the Jordan. Then we get it again with John the Baptist, Yohanan ben Zechariah, Elijah, Yahweh is God, and Jesus at the Jordan. You get these patterns that repeat themselves over and over and over again. So what we're about to get into... When you begin to seek and get into God's word, he says it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of a king to search it out. So everything we need to know is right here. So you guys ready? Um, I want to tell you, reflect back to the board real, real quick, because Pentecost, I don't know if it's going to holler. It's the mic. Um, move it over here. Um, one thing I told you guys, and I showed a pattern of it, I don't even know how many times biblically is that Christ is going to return on Pentecost and I know there's various beliefs and, and stuff like that but man I've went through probably I don't know 10 or, or you know or more where it shows that we see this return every single time and what God did on Pentecost uh, Jesus began his ministry when he died it was on a Jubilee year that he died because he paid the sin debt, everything's free. So this is all still in connection with what I told you guys, remember. So when Jesus came in Luke 4 and said, he, you know, uh, came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the acceptable year of the Lord, that was Pentecost. When all, you know, land was returned to its original owner. When all the debts were paid. That's why he died on a jubilee year. Right? He died on a Jubilee year. So, remember, um, the year of Jubilee is introduced by the blowing of the trumpet. Wow. Pretty amazing. The first trump is at Passover in the beginning. Now, I don't want to confuse you guys, but Rosh Hashanah means the blowing of the shofar, which is the ram's horn. But on, in Exodus chapter 15 through 19, God had commanded the children of Israel to make two silver trumpets. Right? There's a first trump and a last trump. Exodus 19, God descended on the mountain with the great sound of a trumpet and the voice of God. Right? He came down, that was on Pentecost, and Moses went up. We're going to see this pattern repeated over and over, especially in the story of, of Elijah and many other. It's after 49 years. Right? And it's pretty funny that you got Passover, unleavened bread, you got seven weeks of seven, 49 days. Watch this, 49 days, and then the 50th day is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down. God came down on Pentecost, remember? 3,000 died on the same day, 1,500 years later. The Holy Spirit came down, 3,000 was saved. The two-edged sword, the Holy Spirit. God comes down on Pentecost. You're going to find out how the 50 prophets knew, 50, the number of Pentecost, knew that Elijah was going to be taken up. Why? Because it was Pentecost. They know that God descends on Pentecost with fire, cloven like tongues of fire. This is repeated over and over as a pattern. It's 49 years in Jubilee. 
from the barley harvest is seven weeks of seven, 49 days. Bam. Right? And then the 50th day Pentecost begins the wheat harvest. Christ the first fruits, the barley harvest, he gathers in, and then those that are his at his coming. The, the wheat harvest, he gathers the wheat into his barn. Um, you see the same thing repeated with the 70 weeks of Daniel. Right? 70 times uh, 7. 490 years Messiah would come and be cut off. His coming. Right? There it is. It's predicted. You get this pattern over and over. Um, the year the debt is paid in full. This is all reflecting because this is very important. You're going to find out what follows Pentecost as judgment. I told you guys that before. Um, the year the debt is paid in full. That's what Jesus did. It was the year of Jubilee. Um, it restores rest to the land. We find our rest, our Shabbat, our Sabbath in Jesus Christ. The, the earth is made up of 70% uh, water and 30% land. We're taken from the dust of the earth. Remember? We're the same. We get rest through Christ. Um, and then we find out that it's figurative of Christ. That it was Christ's min, uh, mission in Isaiah 61. He, he, he proclaims it. He says, this is being fulfilled in your hearing. He's quoting it in Luke, right? But when he says that, right when he gets to it and he says that um, what's being proclaimed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to set the captive free, the heal and all this stuff. And I'm just throwing this at you so we can get into the message so you really catch it, what's going on. So when he's proclaiming this, in Isaiah 61, he didn't finish what followed. He closed the book. What followed that last, he, he actually broke it off in the middle of a sentence. You know, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and judgment. But he closed it. Because that was Pentecost. A jubilee year when he's going to return and judgment begins. And you're going to see it. Um, Christ's mis mission uh, was for man. He fulfilled it at his death. He set the captives free. Wow. Jubilee, the debt's paid. He went into the earth, set the captives free. Isn't that what it's about? Yeah. Right. He paid the debt. Earth's jubilee. Um, let's see. Notice what jubilee is about. It's about man and the land. He redeems man, and when he returns again, it's, uh, he's going to make all things new. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really good. So you guys ready? Now we can start. Um, so what I wrote down here is the coming of Elijah brings the coming of, brings the coming of Yeshua. So we are expecting Elijah to come. When the Lord returns, right before he comes, if you read in the book of Revelation, you, think, you know there's two witnesses. Some people believe it's Moses and Elijah. Some believe that it's uh, Elijah and Enoch because he, neither one of them, you know, uh, suffered a physical death or whatever it was. But we're going to get into it. Um, so the coming of Elijah brings the coming of Yeshua. We're going to start in 1 Kings chapter 17. We're going to read the story. It's going to blow you away. I guarantee it. Notice number one. I want to uh, throw some things at you really quick. First thing I want you to note, I want you to notice is that Elijah appeared with Christ on a Mount of Transfiguration. Remember that? Very important. He appeared with him on a Mount of Transfiguration at the Feast of Tabernacles. He said, Lord, it is good that we're here. Let us build a sakuth or a booth, a tabernacle for you, Moses, and Elijah. It was Moses and Elijah that appeared with Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. Now watch this. There's only three in the Bible that fasted 40 days. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Wow. Isn't it kind of crazy that Moses went to Horeb in a cave of Horeb, right, fasted 40 days, the same place Elijah went to, Mount Horeb, in the same cave. Wow. So you get this picture of Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Moses was a picture of God. Elijah was a picture of God. Jesus was God in the flesh. And we're going to break all that down so you can see it. Number one, John was a type of Elijah in Luke chapter 1. Jesus said it. Right? They're looking for the Elijah to come. And he says, look, Elijah, John was the Elijah to come. And you missed it. 
What was Elijah to do? To bring the hearts of the children back to the fathers. That's what, but also, the spirit of Elijah brings judgment. Brings three and a half years of famine. Wow. So guess what? If it happened with Elijah physically, and it happened with Elijah spiritually with John the Baptist, it's going to happen again in the end. How do we know that? Revelation says, man, great famine, Matthew 24. We can expect a physical famine. But l l watch this. You had a physical famine first with Elijah. You had a spiritual famine with John the Baptist, who was Elijah, to come. You're going to have a physical and spiritual famine of the Word in the end. Both. And then, um, I want to read this. It's in... Uh, uh, the prophecy, uh, Elijah, in the prediction of the prophecy of his coming. Now, Elijah came. It was a type. It was a, a, a foreshadow of what God's going to do in the end. They said they knew they were looking. They were supposed to be looking for Elijah to come for for Yeshua to come, right? But it, it didn't only apply to that first coming. It applies to the second coming as well. So you ready? So go to Malachi chapter four. I'm going to show you verse one through six. And all I'm doing right now, before I get into the story, so you can understand it in a better way, is, is laying the groundwork for you guys. And you guys know I have to lay groundwork for you. So look what it says in uh, Malachi chapter 4. It says in uh, verse 1 through 6, it says, For behold, the day cometh um, that shall burn as an oven. Wow, judgment came first by water, second by fire. Right? Remember the power that Elijah had to do what? Call down fire. You're going to see what day he calls down fire. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Now, that's the end. That's the end. He destroyed the earth by water, put a rainbow in the heaven. That covenant still stands today. No, it stands because every time we look up, he says, as long as you see the rainbow, he would not judge the earth by water. First by water, then by fire. Right? So right here, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi, the minor prophet, is saying, right after Malachi, I want you to understand, there was a famine of the Word of God for 430 years till, till uh, John the Baptist came and broke it. 400 years of silence. John the Baptist began his ministry at 30 years old. Bam! He was six months older than Christ, and that's when the famine had broke. He began to proclaim it. Here it comes, right? Amazing. So he says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall uh, be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Why? That's why the widow woman had the issue of blood 12 years, grabbed his talit. Because it's called the wings. They were healing in the wings, the word, the blue. She grabbed for the blue. The blue is the word. She grabbed for it. And virtue went out of her and healed the woman. That's his why. They pull that over his head. It's a covering. They, the, the reason God commanded him to make put 613 knots in it is because it brought him back to Mount Sinai where they received the law. The 613 laws of God. And why was it called a prayer shawl? Because the mountain became, watch this is all part of the wedding, the mountain, they were overshadowed by the mountain. The hoopah, that's why you get married under a canopy in America. We don't even know why. That's why we get engaged. That's a ketubah, a wedding contract. They was given, we, you and I have been given a wedding contract, right, on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came down, this is my promise, my promise, my engagement to you, that if you stay and remain, I'm coming back for you. Pretty amazing how it all connects. Um, it says, um, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves in a stall. Wow! Born, laid in a manger, a feeding trough. Pretty amazing. That's what we're supposed to do. Eat him, right? Wrapped in a swaddling cloth. Eat the word. Eat the lamb. 
born in a field in Bethlehem. All the lambs that were sacrificed to God came from Bethlehem. Wow, that's where they had to go. That's what was accepted. Heaven's oven, it's called the house of bread, or Bethlehem, or heaven's oven. Because every seventh day when they took the bread off the face table, the bread of face, they ate it just like it came out of an oven. Pretty, pretty uh, amazing stuff. It says, um, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under your soles of your feet, in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. This first part, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, 2, and 3, is talking about when the Lord comes. Not when he came already, his next coming, when I, he, he you know, burns up everything, his return, his second coming. Watch this. The prophecy of the coming of Elijah. Watch the connection here. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant? Where did it come from? The day of Pentecost. God gave it to him on the day of Pentecost. 50, Jubilee, 50, Pentecost. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Horeb, Mount Sinai, is made of two humps. Pretty amazing. Mount Sinai is the high hump. The lower hump is Mount Horeb. Horeb is the split rock where the waters ushered out of, gushed out of the split rock. One mountain, two peaks. Right? It says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him at Horeb for all of Israel with the statutes and the judgments. Right? The statutes and the judgments. He's bringing you back to the day of Pentecost. Amazing. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and smite thee with a curse. Man, these are little clues that God is letting us know. Number one, when he's going to return. And number two, when the judgment is going to be. If you go back to, the, to Joel, remember on the day of Pentecost, Peter connected Acts chapter 2 with Joel. Right? He says, this is what was uh, prophesied by the prophet Joel. Your sons and daughters would prophesy. But guess what? And, f and blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall turn into darkness and the moon blood rate on, on the great notable day of the Lord. What is the notable day? The notable day, I'll show you 50 times, is Pentecost. It's amazing. John was caught up in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. That was Pentecost. Pretty crazy, huh? That was exactly 50 years after Christ died. On a, Christ died on a Jubilee. 50 years later, God gave John, caught him up on a day of Pentecost. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. He was caught up into the heaven. He was on the aisle called Patmos for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that's for the Old Covenant, the Word of God and the testimony that Jesus was God, died and rose again on the third day. He was on an island, a rock island which is an altar surrounded by water which is a labor wow. Ah! Wow. Jesus when he was baptized was standing on an altar in a labor that was in the Jordan 12 stones under the water I'm not gonna get crazy Pete <laughs> yes. I told Pete I'm not gonna get crazy but what you see the 12 stones in the water, Solomon's temple, 12 oxen, 12 brazen oxen. Jesus' feet is brass. Brazen altar, brazen labor represents the feet, the gospel, that he died and rose again. Feet burned as brass, the altar. The labor, the water, the washing of the regeneration of the word. That's the gospel. That he died and rose again. Repent and be baptized for remission of sins. The twelve brazen oxen in Solomon's temple. Twelve oxen holding up the sea of brass that held 10,000 baths. Five labors on, five water containers on the right, five water containers on the left. That's the feet. Five toes, five toes that the priest took the water out. That's why Christ's feet was as burned as brass. What? All of these things, man, you begin to see them, how they all tie in and how they all connected. 
Now, where was I getting crazy? Watch this. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1 through 5. I'll give you another scripture. <sighs> Man, Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. And I'm just laying the groundwork to bring you into it. So when I start breaking it down, you, when I'm te by telling you this, I'm going to let you start making the connections. You're going to start seeing things. This is very important. Watch what he says, Isaiah 40, verse 1 through 5. He says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that, uh, that her warfare... That means that her conflict is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord hand double for her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the, uh, the desert a highway for our God. Et, watch this now. Watch. Because this is very important. Because now, to connect this with you, I've got to bring you to Zechariah. Because Zechariah talks about the coming of the Lord. And when the Lord comes in Zechariah chapter 12 through 14, it says that every mountain, remember I told you guys, every mountain would be made low. And every valley would be raised and the crooked paths would be made straight at His coming. And waters shall usher out. The mountain will cleave in the middle and living waters will flow out. And go to the hinder sea, the dead sea, and bring life to it again. And wherever the waters flow, and everyone gets in that water, life Amen. will come. Amen. So watch this prophecy that's being spoke twofold. He says, make the straight, uh, make straight in the desert, verse 3, a highway for my God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked path shall be made straight, and the rough place is plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. The word glory means the face. The face. Show me your glory. They want to see the face of Christ. The face of God. Moses wanted to see his face. You can't. Moses can only show you a shadow. The law can only show you the back parts, the hinder parts, the shadow of who he is. He's all about him. But let me tell you something. In order to see it, he hit him in a cleft of a rock. That cleft is Jesus. For Moses said, For God shall raise up a prophet like unto myself. Him shall ye hear. Him. And that's what Jesus was proclaiming. But you see, just as Moses veiled his face and they couldn't look upon him, God had to be veiled in a fail. God had to be veiled in a skin. Yeah. So Satan wouldn't know who he was so he could take the kingdom back. Why? Because Satan got in a skin and took it from the first Adam. So God got in a skin through Mary, clothed in a veil. The ark is not now behind the, the, the temple. Behind the veil in the temple was taken away 600 years before. Hidden away. Why? 600 years later, and the number of man, Christ the ark, veiled behind a veil in a tent skin, is walking amongst them. Like John said, and we beheld his glory. Wow, when he was transfigured on the Mount of Olives, Peter, James, and John, the veil was rent. They could see him. His, the glory of God shone through that veil. It was so bright they couldn't even look at him. Man. So these are pictures. So what we do is we go back. Right? We go back. So Moses can only give you a picture. But that Moses what was giving you a picture after he came down off of the mountain the second time with his face veiled was slowly fading away. Why? Because because the truth was about to be manifested. The real truth. It was concealed in the old. Revealed in the new. That's why they didn't recognize him when he arose. You guys know. Because his mama's skin was ripped off of him. His mama's skin was gone. And when he arose, here he is, the one that created the red man, Adam, in the very beginning. Now, right? 
Mary peers in, sees two angels at the head and the feet, looking at the mercy seat. There it is. Bam. I told you guys that. Turns around, perceives Jesus to be the gardener. The first gardener was Adam. Jesus was called the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15. She didn't recognize him, but she, she knew his voice. Why? Because he didn't look the same. He looked like he did in the very beginning when he formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, his twin. And that's why every twin in the Bible represents the two Adams. Cain and Abel. Jacob and Esau. Esau was red and hairy. Right? Wow. And uh, Finhaz and Elpaz, I think their names was, Judah's first two born son from Tamar. And one means one of their names means uh, uh, causes a breach, and the other one means dawning of a new day, the the uh, the, uh, the shining forth of light. The first son, his name means causes a breach. That was the first Adam. The dawning of a new day, the new da that's Jesus Christ. Remember the first arm that come out. That was Christ's arm. They wrapped a red scarlet thread around his arm and he pulled it in. But the other son came first. That was, Christ came first, formed Adam, but the first one we get a sight of is Adam. And when that arm came in with that scarlet thread and went in and his brother came forth, and remember the, the midwife said, who is this that this broke forth a breach, caused a breach? You were not first, the other one was first, right? Because Christ was before Adam. You with me? And I want to, golly, there's so much I could share with you guys. Man. Let me tell you, number one, the first sign of Elijah first sign of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah brings the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Let me tell you something. When there's no food and you're not hearing the word of God, but even when you got food and you're not hearing the word of God, I guarantee you people will bear witness with me in here. Let me tell you something. When I'm not hearing God, I'm crying. Father, did I do something? What's wrong? I'm not hearing your voice. Where are you at? Great panic comes on me. Immediately I start checking myself. Did I do something? Did I, did I hinder the spirit? Am I not being obedient? You know? So a famine of the word, if you truly are in love with Jesus Christ, you're going to start seeking him with your whole heart. Man, speak to me, please. Because to have known him and heard his voice and him speaking to you, and then he just, all of a sudden, things go dead. It's like, man, what's going on? Well, you're just going through a test. Test. I think we heard that today. And then some people don't even hear him. They don't even care about hearing him. But they proclaim he's his father. That's my father. And if he shouted in his voice, they wouldn't know it's him or not. Even when the father speaks to him directly, you know, they ain't my father. But they'll listen to another voice, Jesus said. Let me stay focused. Number one, the first sign of Elijah, spiritual and physical famine. Number two, his mission is return the hearts of the children back to the Father. Number three, his ministry was only three and a half years. Three and a half years. Wow. 42 months. How long was Christ's ministry? So we can... What I want to do is I want to bring you in. Let's glean... What we can get, all we can get from Elijah. Let's physically and look at him and see what we can learn, what we can expect, what God is trying to show us through the story of Elijah. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's get it. Thank you, Father, for your word, because you, Lord, are amazing. And I'm going to start, um, remember this is on Facebook, you can go back and look in, uh, listen to it later. It's also being recorded, you can see it on uh, YouTube at the Citadel Church um, in Poplarville. Now I'm going to break some words down to you um, as we go. Okay, Father, thank you for your love. Okay, uh, and Elijah, remember Elijah's name means Yahweh is God. The Tishabite, now that t word Tishabite right there just means he was an inhabitant of Tish. Tishabite, Tishaba, okay? That's all it means. He wasn't a, uh, the Tishabite, it means he was just a resident there. He was actually a Benjamite of the tribe of Benjamin. Chapter 17, 1 Kings, I'm sorry, chapter 17. 
So Elijah, Yahweh as God, was a Tishabite. He was living there, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. Gilead means a rocky, strong place. The, uh, the balm. That's where Galatia, the, you know, the makers of eye salve. So you can see Gilead, eye balm. Christ was our eye salve. He's trying to show us something. Said unto Ahab. Now Ahab, his name means my brother is uh, my father's brother. Ahab means father's brother. This is important when you read the word. You're going to see, right? He says, uh, And Elijah the Tishabite, who was uh, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, um, there shall be no dew or rain these years, but according to my word. Three and a half years of famine. So watch this. So now, the beginning of his ministry. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and uh, turn thee eastward, go eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, and that is before the Jordan. Now, Genereth or Cherith, actually the Sea of Galilee, thank you, ma'am, the Sea of Galilee, right to the right of the Sea of Galilee, if you're standing southward in Jerusalem and looking forward, northward, to where the Sea of Galilee is, right to the right would be where God told him to go hide out. All of these things are important. That is before the Jordan. So he was right at the end of the Dead Sea, right before the Jordan. All right? And it shall be that thou shalt drink uh, uh, the brook there. I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Wow. Ravens are unclean. Pretty amazing. God will cause the heathen to give unto you inheritance. God will use the uncircumcised at heart to provide for us during a time of great famine. Listen to him, though. You have to follow what he says. It says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, uh, that is before the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. Brought him a sandwich, some bread and some meat. I wonder if it was a Hillel sandwich, right? <laughs> Made him a say, brought bread and meat. What do you do with the bread and the meat? You put the meat on one egg, make a sandwich. So here it is. The ravens is giving him a sandwich in the morning, sandwich in the evening. This is all right, right? So, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because that there had been no rain in the land. Now, this is about two and a half years he's there. And as you begin to read on, through the story, God begins to lay the time uh, line out. So for two and a half years, this is where Elijah is hidden away by a brook. They can't find him nowhere. He walks up to Ahab. There's going to be famine in the land three and a half years. You ain't going to see nothing. Right? He goes three and a half years. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, it ends it. But he's hiding out there for about two and a half years. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying... Um, it says, And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, in verse 6, and uh, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank uh, of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Um, let me hit this real quick. Let me uh, give you these uh, 12 things about Ahab since we read into him really fast. Just so you'll know about who this guy is, who he's dealing with. Number one. Ahab, uh, his name means father's brother. And I'm going to connect these dots for you. Number two, he was, a he was the wicked king of Israel. He was a king of Israel, okay? Um, number, one, number two, he marries Jezebel. Number three, he introduces Baal worship, right? Number four, denounced, rejected, rebuked by Elijah for what he did. Number uh, five, he gathers the prophets of Baal. Number six, he covets Naboth's vineyard. Now, Naboth, his name means sprout, and I'm going to talk about that. But check this out. He's a king over Israel, over God's vineyard. And he's coveting another man's vineyard. But he's already over the whole vineyard. A vineyard is people. Your place when you come to God and God's vineyard, and he's the husbandman. It says, um, number... Apo means the removal of, and the word calypsis means the veil. So when he comes back, the veil of the bride is removed and you're face to face. Morning, number 11, he's slain in battle. Number 12, very important, 70 sons. Whoo, that 70 is all over the place. Moses, the 12 tribes, 70 elders. 
Jesus, the 12 disciples, the 70 other. These patterns repeat themselves over and over. Um, and then uh, number 13, the prophecies concerning him was fulfilled. Now you know who Jahab is. Je I mean, Ahab is just an, a little bitty thing. So now, uh, verse 7. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarahath, which belongeth to Sidon. Now, um, which Sidon means fishery. So just to kind of give you the position, if you're standing in Jerusalem and look at, looking northward, the Jordan would be on your right in the Mediterranean Sea. The king of Tyre was, uh, Tyre was, you know, a little ways up on the Mediterranean Sea. 20 miles from Tyre was Sidon. Okay? So when he left the Sea of Galilee, that's where he goes to this widow. Man, I'm going to get through this chapter because... When you start seeing how this all unfolds, it's going to be amazing. And it's, man. So, um, arise. So now God is sending him. Uh, he commands him to go to a wood, widow woman there to sustain him. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. Now this is very important. Watch this. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. Well, at the city gates is where the well is. You look for the well, man, that's where God finds his bride every time. Rachel and numerous others. The well. Remember. And remember, the bride has to serve. Not only the spirit. Remember when Eleazar, Abraham's servant, went to the well? He said, Lord, when I call out, Eleazar, his name means helper, right? Abraham the father, right? Isaac the son, Eleazar, the head servant over all of his house, all of his goods, went to get a bride for Isaac. Yeah. Remember, went to the well. Rachel means loops in a rope. I mean, uh, Rachel means you lamb. And his thing was, look, when you get to the well... You know, let this be my prayer. If I ask her to drink, that she gives me drink. Eleazar, his name means helper. He's a picture of the Spirit. But not also that she serves me water, but feeds my, my camels as well. Camels are beasts of burden that are following Eleazar. And on the beast of burden is all kind of gifts for her. But if she only served the Spirit and not the beast of burden, the camels, no gifts. Right. No gifts. Wow. So now she's at the well. She pulls up water for him. Let me get something for your drink too. For your... If she'd have said, hey, let me go back to my father and I'll come back and feed you. Guess what? She'd have missed it. Well, I'm doing what the Spirit says. If you're not serving people, you're not serving the Spirit. Because the Spirit is about people. Yeah. Understand? Let me get off track. Um, so here it is. Um, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering of sticks. This is very important. A widow. Why a widow? Man. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, uh, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. So now we've got bread and water that's in the picture right here. Elijah is a picture, remember, of God, is a picture of Christ. And she said, uh, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks. Oh, my Lord. Two sticks. Why two sticks? Ezekiel 37. The stick, of Jude, the stick of Judah and the stick of Joseph coming together to make one stick. I'll explain that to you later. Man. That I may go and dress it for me and my son and that we may eat it and die. It's a, Ezekiel 37 will talk, give you the, the deal with the, the two sticks. This is a great famine. And here it is. Provision is coming. Right? As long as this widow woman is obedient to what Elijah says, she's going to make it. She could have said, look, I ain't giving you nothing. But because of her obedience, what happens? And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make it for thee um, and for thy son. So here's a widow woman with a son and a picture of Elijah there at the house during a the time of a great famine. Right? And this is the, 
this is uh, two and a half years into the Great Famine, and um, there's about a year left, and you're going to see it. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. This is provision, right? Neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she said, uh, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she, and she and he and her house did eat one full year. Wow. That means at the end of that full year, the rain came. So now, so now he's giving you the sequence. He's lining it up for you. He's hiding out two and a half years. Reveals himself to a widow woman who has a son. Oh, let's check this out. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake through Elijah. Now watch this. Now, I don't tell you who Elijah represented. Now we got a widow woman with a son. I want you to tell me what's happening here. Jesus Christ's ministry was three and a half years. Elijah's ministry was 42 months. Watch. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore uh, that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? It's a time of vengeance. Let's check it out. We keep reading. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft. He took a dead son, the firstborn son, and carried him into an upper loft. Are you with me? Watch. Where he abode, and he laid him upon his own bed. Elijah, who has an upper room. <laughs> an upper room. Watch this. It's crazy. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him. Elijah is a picture of God, the boy, the firstborn son of a widow. Uh, was Mary a widow when Jesus died? I think so. <laughs> what? 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 It says, And he said unto her, Give me a son. And he took him out of her bosom. Give me a son. He took him out of her bosom. And carried him up into the loft, where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. Rest. Bed. Where he laid down to sleep. Christ had to be laid down to sleep. On something up in a high place. The cross. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, Hast thou also brought evil upon the widow, widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Watch. Are you bringing forth judgment upon the widow like you're doing to everybody else? It doesn't make sense. Watch. So now. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. Laid him on the bed. One, two, three. The upper, the sign of the cross, the firstborn son resurrecting from the dead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is a picture. A foreshadow of what's going to come. John was the Elijah to come. Elijah, three and a half years later, Christ laid to rest, dead, up on a cross, right? The firstborn son of a widow gives John his mother. John, behold thy mother, the widow. Take care of her for me now. Why? Because he was the firstborn. 
and John didn't give his mother over to his brothers who didn't believe but gave him to John his right hand behold thy mother take care of her and today still to today Mary and John are buried in the same place ah wow mm. what it says, And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber. <laughs> wow. Whether you want to look at the chamber, we got, a, we got a burial place, a place of rest, which is a chamber, Elijah's chamber, Christ's chamber, where he was put away, right? And Joseph, the throne of Joseph, I mean, the, uh, a new uh, sepulchre of Joseph of Arimathea, right? Right. And the Lord uh, heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child uh, came back into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him into his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. Watch this. And after being there all of this while, after this woman with her own son, feeding from a barrel of meal and, and, and oil, for a whole year still doesn't believe still doesn't believe but watch what she says now because this is where this is where our foundation of everything lies miracles don't lie in our foundation no other religion proclaims any supposedly guru, messiah, savior, none other than Christianity that a man died and rose again. And he says, And a woman said unto Elijah, the woman, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord is, is uh, in thy mouth is truth. You know what's amazing about that day? It was a day of revealing. You know why? Because seeing is believing. What was most dear to her, the firstborn son, her husband's gone. This is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the story of Elijah, whose name means Yahweh is God. And you know that Yeshua is God. Right? Man, I ain't even started breaking this thing down. What time is it? What time is it? 12.21. Marie, just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Because, man, it gets crazy. Let me just read a little bit more because it gets crazy. To show you. Now, this ended apart. You with me? So now, we see the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? We know that the time of Elijah... It's judgment time. Even in the end, the two witnesses, the two olive branches, which makes the menorah. We know they're a picture of the end. So now, this comes to his death. This story leads up from his death, burial, and resurrection. But this same time, now, we're going to see judgment. So now, it goes into a future coming. And what happens? Watch what follows Elijah. Now, watch this. And watch all the proof that's hidden in it. He says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now, it's in the third year, right? Watch what he says. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. Very, very important statement here. It's in the third year that revealing comes forth. You understand? It's in the third year something is being revealed. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Oh my God. Samaria. That's where Shiloh was. 
That's where the tabernacle was set up. That's where it was set up. Shiloh is Shechem. Shechem, between the mountains, between the two shoulders. Two mountains, Shechem means shoulder. Between the shoulders, to the cross. You with me? You guys been under the teaching, you know. When they brought the tabernacle of Moses, they set it up between the mountains, between the shoulders, which is called Shechem. Shechem is shoulder. Shechem is, is Samaria. Very important place where Jesus must go to the woman of the well and asks for water. Where's he looking? And then he confronts her on a bride being, watch, a marriage. Call your husband. I had none. I don't have, uh, I've had, I don't have none. That's right, you had five and the one you with now. He's not. Six. And then he returns. But man. So he says, And Elijah went to show himself to Ahab, and there was a sore famine in uh, Samaria. And Ahab called to Obadiah, which was the governor of the house. Right? Now, Obadiah, his name means uh, the servant of Yahweh. Watch this. And Ahab called unto Obadiah, which is the governor of his house, and he feared the Lord greatly. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets. Watch this. These are clues to when the great revealing is going to be. Watch. And watch this. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah, the servant of the Lord, took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave. Fifty and fifty. Fifty is Pentecost. They're letting you know what day it is. Watch what he does. A day of judgment. <laughs> For it was so when Jezebel had cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. The servant of Yahweh, servant of God. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go unto the land, unto the fountains of water, and unto all the brooks, peradventure, we may find uh, grass to save the horses and the mules alive, that we may not lose them uh, to the beast. Listen, they go and look for water. There's a great famine in the land. When was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? John chapter 7. And this he spoke of, that rivers of water. He is looking on Pentecost for water. Wow! Jesus told the woman of Samaria, on, and he said, look, if you'd have asked me, I'd have given you rivers of living water. Why? There was a famine. Amen. And that he spoke of in John chapter 4, it was fulfilled in John chapter 7 on the day of Pentecost. Because it was prophesied that out of you shall flow rivers of living water. This is the day he separated 100 to 50. 50 is Pentecost. They're looking for water. Ah! Watch the picture. But what's coming? Judgment. Judgment comes on Pentecost. Deliverance and judgment. Mm. He says, he says, verse 5, And Ahab said unto Obadiah, the servant of God, Go into the land, into the mountains, to the fountains of the water, and unto all the brooks, peradventure we may find some grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we may not lose the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. And Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way. And Obadiah was in the way, and behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Art thou uh, my Lord Elijah? Are you? Watch. They separated. Go and look for some water. On that day, there was a revealing. What does Elijah's name mean? Yahweh is God. Are you? God! A foreshadow, a picture. Now they don't understand. But God is revealed on the day of Pentecost. Watch. How do we know it's the day of Pentecost? Watch what he says. Crazy. These are the things that you and I can expect. And Obadiah was in the way and behold Elijah met him. And he knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Art thou my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. What did you say? Ah! 
the same voice in a burning bush on Pentecost. You looking for water? On Pentecost, we see an outpouring of water and fire. Pentecost, out of you rivers of living water, fire on their head. Burning bush, Pentecost, bam, fire. The mountain, Sinai, was ablaze. Thunders and voices and lightnings and... Come on up, baby, because judgment. This pattern, I could show you... I'm going to be conservative. <laughs> I'm just going to say ten times. Being very conservative. Very. Watch this. So, fire and water. Watch this. And Obadiah was in the way. Behold, Elijah met him. And he knew him. And he fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go. Tell thy Lord, Behold, God, Elijah, is here. Behold, God is here. That's what the word says. Yeah. That's what his name means. Yeah. I am. And go tell your servant, God is here. Because wow. he was a carrier of his presence, his voice, his very name. It gets better. Hold on a second. Son, if you thirsty, come and drink. Watch what he says. And he said, what? Watch this. This guy knows about what happens on Pentecost. Watch what he says. And he said, what? Have I sinned? That thou wouldest deliver thy servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whether my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found him not. These nations said, no, he's not here, he's not here, he's not here. Jesus said, I'm going, you can't come with me. They took an oath. He was gone, son. Watch. And now thou sayest, go tell the Lord, my Lord, behold, Elijah is here. Watch what he says. And it shall come to pass, whoa, as soon as I am going from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry thee to another place. Ah! Whoa. That's Pentecost. Yeah. He was caught up. On the day of Pentecost. Wow. The day he brings judgment is the same day the 50 prophets proclaim. Don't you know your master is going to be taken away from you today? I know, hold your peace. How do they know? Because that's the day fire came down. That was the day it kept coming down. And guess what? That's the day it's going to come down again. Fire. What happens now? Go tell Ahab, if God be God, serve him. But if Baal be Lord, sail, uh, serve him. For today... We're going to go up on top of a mountain. And we're going to build an altar. Ugh. And we're going to call down fire. Yeah. And whosoever God answers by fire yeah. is Pentecost. He is God. Yeah. Gathered up the 450 prophets. And we're going to read it. But I'm just, i got to end. I really don't. Ugh. Let's go. Mm, watch this. Man, this is so, I'm going to stop. Got to get to a point and stop. Man. And he said, watch this. He said, he said, and thou sayest, go tell my Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee where I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Watch. 
Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? Listen to me. You can expect in the last three and a half years, they're going to be gunning for you and me. Because if you carry the testimony of Jesus Christ inside of you, the Jezebel spirit wants you dead. Amen. So what does he do? Another inclination as to what the time is. It's pretty amazing how we come over here and we see... Anyway, let me just keep reading. He says, What is it told? Uh, what was it not told to my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? When I, uh, how I hit a hundred men of the Lord's prophet by fifty in a cave? <laughs> Man, what? What? <laughs> Golly! Let's break it down and give you the number again. And he says, And I fed them with bread and water, and now thy sayest, Go tell my Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he uh, shall slay me. Right? This, man, this guy, Obadiah, is the servant of Yahweh. The servant of Yahweh, the head servant of Yahweh's house is, uh, is Eleazar, Abraham's head servant who has the gifts, is a picture of the spirit. Obadiah is servant in the house of the Lord. He's the head servant that's taking care of the fifty. He's taking care of 50 and 50 because he's a picture. Obadiah is a picture of the Holy Spirit feeding them bread and water. Ah! Man, let it be established by two witnesses, 50 and 50. This Obadiah, the servant of the Most High God. The Spirit of the Lord who's looking for a bride. The Spirit of the Lord who came down on the very day of Pentecost. Taking care of 50 and 50. Only God, son. Yeah. He is smoking. <laughs> he is amazing. So... So it's Pentecost time, and they're looking for water. They run into God, right? Then this servant, it's Pentecost. They look at, he's looking for water. Out of you shall flow rivers of water on a day of Pentecost. He's a servant of the Most High God, picture of the Holy Spirit. Has now taken 100 men and broken them into two fifties. Fifty is Pentecost. Now God is there, and he says, So Obadiah went... So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, Ahab, uh, and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah, and it came to pass when Ahab, Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou, art thou uh, he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. And ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. That was given on Pentecost. Another clue. And you have followed Baal. Now therefore, send and gather uh, to me all Israel to Mount Carmel. Right? Now, now, this is amazing. What I'm about to tell you right here. And the prophets of Baal, 400. And 50, and the prophets of the groves were 400 that ate at Jezebel's table. 450 total. Now, this is so crazy because where does Elijah, who is a picture of God, on Pentecost, when it's his return, where does he gather him at? Well, let me just tell you, Mount Carmel, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Megiddo, the Valley of Armageddon. <laughs> he gathers them all. And guess what? When we read on, he cuts off all their heads. Right? We're going to find out. How does Elijah know about, you know, he starts messing with them. They built an altar. Hey, maybe your God is on vacation. Maybe your God's sleeping. And they cut themselves and did all kind of crazy junk. But you see, Elijah knew that was the day fire comes down. Watch what he does. So crazy. Build an altar of 12 stones. Uh-oh. And put wood on top. And put an offering. And by the way, dig a moat around it and fill it with water. Twelve stones in the water. Ah! Yeah. I think, I mean, 
on top of a mountain, in a high place. Here it is, at the evening. Pentecost is there, it's starting. And here it is, if God be God, he tells him, build an altar of 12 stones, dig a moat around it, put the offering with wood on it, pour one, pour two, pour three. What happens on that day? Fire comes down. Not only, it comes down. But I think it licks up and picks up everything that's there and takes it up into heaven. Amen. We're going to read it. We ain't giving you a verse. We're going to break it down so we could see what it is, what God is trying to tell us. And guess what? As soon as that happened, this offering, this sacrifice, don't you know that you are a living sacrifice? what he's going to go through, which we're about to go through that in a minute. We're going to read. What happened? What did God do? He sent another angel to strengthen him. And if I'm not mistaken, all the way into the valley of Megiddo where they finished him off. The very place where all the armies of the world are gathered up at the end where God does the final judgment. The same exact place. And I'm going to stop there. Wow. Because it don't get, it just keeps getting better. It just keeps getting better. Amazing stuff. Oh, he is amazing. I think I can stop right there. Yes. I'm going to stop right there. Yes. Pray. Father, mm, you're so amazing, Lord. Father, thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for eyes to see, Father, and ears to hear, Lord. Lord, I ask, Father, that you would just uh, be with us, Father, as we go out this week, Lord. And, um, Lord, I ask that your blessings would be upon your people, not only spiritually, Father, but physically. Lord, you know, you know where we're all at. But, Lord, our, our trust is in you, Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, that he is the only one that died and rose again. Yeshua is the one and only true God. And, Lord, we can't wait for him to return. We are looking forward for his return. Father, bless your people. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed, guys. To be continued. Yes. Oh, hey, also, um, you guys don't leave because uh, Gracie. Hey, how crazy is this? Here today is all about this Pentecost deal and the coming of the Lord. And, you know, and here it is. Grace makes the floor de lis, which is a sign of the Trinity. Wow. Right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right? Awesome. Grace, thank you very much. Yeah. You, uh, you guys are, are a blessing to us. Yeah. A blessing and a half. And we love you. Yeah. So do I love everybody in here. Yeah. It's all good. God is good. And I'm glad you're here. Guys, be blessed. I'm going to tell you again, Wednesday night, man. If you can make it, um, as, as, uh, as the teachings go, you know that I have to tie in a lot of things. It's not only the tabernacle of Moses, it takes a lot of tying things together so that you can get the big picture of some amazing things. So you too will be able to understand more as you begin to read that when we read the Word, what are we doing? We're looking for Jesus. Yeah. So when you read your word in the Old Covenant, look for him. Try to see if you could connect some dots. Man, 42 months, wow, three and a half years. Ministry, you know, crisis ministry. Start try to connect some little dots. And the more you go, man, all of a sudden, the, the revelation of light just begins to come on. And all you can see is Jesus, Elijah, stretching his hands out. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the miracle of the oil and all of that, it's good. He provided for. Yeah, that's good. But what's better is that, he, you know, a man that was lifted up about 700 years after Elijah. Because Elijah was prophesying before the destruction of the temple. That Jesus Christ, exactly what Elijah prophesied, come to pass. 
That's what's good. And food is just for this, this earthly vessel. But what's going to keep us in the end is the spiritual food that we have stored up inside of us. That's what's going to endure. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to need to be drawn from. I know what's going on in the world, but God said, yeah, but yeah. God said, but God said he's coming. I don't care what I see, what happens, what goes down. Amen. He's coming. Amen. And I'm ready. Amen. And I'm looking for him. Be blessed. Yeah. Hurry up, get out of here before I don't stop. <laughs> yes. I'm funny.